This is the Omi ePod, and it's the second charge point that Omi has launched since the very successful Home Pro, which we reviewed earlier this year. It's also been one of our most popular new launches, so let's see what all the fuss is about. Let's get the obvious out of the way. It's an untethered unit, which means there's no permanent cable attached to it, whereas the Home Pro came with a cable included. Now, there are some benefits to this. It works with any EV, so you just need the appropriate cable that either came with the car or purchased one yourself, plug it into the socket here and then into the vehicle. Plus, you can also choose any cable length. You're not restricted to what the manufacturer offers. You can purchase a longer cable should you need one. And I think it looks neater as well. When the vehicle's not charging, you don't have an ugly cable on show, stowed away on a cable tidy or anything like that. Obviously that comes down to personal preference, but I think untethered looks neater when you're not charging the vehicle. Now, some of the downsides to untethered is that you'll need to buy your own cable potentially if it doesn't come with the vehicle. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, it could be a benefit if you need a longer cable, you're not stuck with what the manufacturer provides, but yeah, you'll have to fork out potentially for your own new EV charging cable. And arguably, it's less convenient. You might have to get the cable out of your car boot every time you want to plug in or wherever you're storing the cable. Personally, I don't think it's that inconvenient, but a lot of people who go for tethered feel it's easier because the cable is always available simply because it's attached to the unit. Other major differences between the ePod and the Home Pro is there's no screen on this unit anymore, but you do still have these function buttons to start a charge, pause a charge, and stop a charge. The ePod somehow looks slimmer than the Home Pro despite the actual dimensions not being that different. I just think it's a better overall looking product. It, it feels better to hold in the hand, although you obviously won't be doing that when you're charging, but yeah, I think Omi have really made some significant improvements to the ePod versus the Home Pro. Aside from being untethered, the main features can be found in the Omi app, which has seen some refinements and improvements to the overall user interface, and I'm pleased to say that the app is easier to use than ever before, and that's really good to see from a customer experience point of view. The menu is just easier to get around. Settings, if you want to change them, that's easy to find. So yeah, no problems here. One thing I do have a gripe with is the charging graph. So this tells you how much energy is going to go into the vehicle during a scheduled charge at what time. I just think it's not particularly easy to look at. It's not intuitive, but Omi do tell me they are working on changing this. When that will happen, I'm not so sure, but hopefully it's on the way soon. One other major change is the addition of a software lock. So this prevents anyone from tampering with the buttons on the hardware itself. So no one should be able to come up and stop your charge with the buttons on the unit. And you can also approve each plugin. So in the settings here, you can lock the buttons or approve each plugin. And effectively, once the cable goes into the OMI unit and the vehicle, a notification should pop up asking whether you are happy for the charge to start or the scheduled charge to start. So yeah, if you're worried about anyone coming up and using your charger without your knowledge, it's unlikely to happen anyway, to be honest, but you've got that additional sense of security. In terms of the overall charging experience, Omi works a little bit differently from other chargers where you would typically set a start and a stop time for charging. Instead with the Omi, you'll set a percentage target so for example, you might say, I would like 70% charge by 7 a.m. And the OMI will effectively do the hard work. You can tell it whether you want this to be on weekdays or weekends or specific days of the week. You can set more than one schedule by the way as well. So weekdays, you need something different to the weekend or on a Wednesday, you can do that. Um, set your departure time. And you can also tell the vehicle to precondition so it will warm up uh, with the climate control and the battery should you want to do that. Now there is a slight snag for all this smart tech to work your vehicle needs to be on what Omi call the API compatibility list. Effectively if your vehicle's not compatible with those features then they won't work. 
To be clear, you can still use an Omi charger to charge your vehicle, but the experience is just a bit more clunky, to be honest. I still really like Omi's approach to smart charging for EVs, especially if your vehicle is on the compatibility list. Furthermore, the app is really easy to use and navigate. The energy tariff integration is second to none. Plus, Omi's customer support is really, really good. And that is super important if you do have any issues with your charger or you just want some advice throughout your EV charging experience. So should you buy the Omi ePod? Yes, if your vehicle is on the compatibility list, it's a bit of a no-brainer really. It's a really nice looking product. The build quality is great, the app is great, and it's an attractive price point as well. But if your vehicle's not on that compatibility list, then there's a bit of a question mark over it because it probably means it's a little bit harder to use than say the easy one or even another alternative charger that you can find on our website so yeah question mark on it if your vehicle's not on that compatibility list but if it is definitely definitely consider the epod so if you are set on an omi product should you get the epod or the home pro well my personal preference is the epod the price point is lower on the epod so that's definitely worth bearing in mind but ultimately it comes down to whether your preference is for tethered or untethered so if you want the cable to be permanently attached you don't want to buy another cable go for the home pro and if you prefer the neatness or you're not bothered whether the cable is attached or not then go for the epod if you're looking for more detail, then please check out our written review of the Omi ePod on the Smart Home Charge website, and you'll find a link for that in the description below. Plus, there's a bunch more guides and tips and tools that will really help on your EV charging journey. And of course, you can order an installation from us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.